that, that's basically what you need to do. That and you, I'll just give you a few examples. You can do that throughout the day. But um, oh, the cost wise, there's about forty bucks to buy. But at the moment, they actually give you those forty bucks back if you write to them. Mm. Mm. They give you uses of form. That. Yeah. Uh, these guys, uh, the cheapest I've been able to get them is um, seven ninety five. Mm. Minus five percent at Kim Mart in Mount Barker, but they wanted to buy ten boxes at a time, and they're a bit cagey about only letting me buy it. I'm trying to, mm. but otherwise in uh, Kim Mart in in uh, Terry White in in Mount Barker at the chemist, they will do it for seven ninety five for sure, and they'll have them there the next day for seven ninety five. Mm -hmm. um, chemist King at Murray Bridge is seven ninety five. Oh right, yeah, so seven ninety five seems that I haven't I haven't been able to push anybody any lower, so. Mm. So yeah, eighty cents a strip, and the freestyle about you can get them for about thirty, somewhere between thirty and forty dollars. Sometimes I've got them as low as twenty dollars, so they make each test about a dollar. So somewhere you know, but the way I look at it, look, it's a cup of coffee a day sometimes. Mm. But hey, it, it's a bit more important than so even mm. if you have a few tests a day. Um, but here's my suggestions for for daily testing. Um, and again, think about what, why we're doing it. You know, yeah, it's all good. Okay, we want to learn from it, don't we? So, the aim of number one, daily testing, to tracking your metabolic baseline, finding out where you're at, and and what is your norm. You know, it's no good you comparing your numbers to mine. Oh, you're four point seven at one o'clock, and I was, I was five point two. Well, I'm like, no, it, you you've got your norm. I've got my norm. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of it. Some days you may not see any change. The whole point is to get a database going on yourself. Okay? So this is what I would do. If you had option one, you just do once a day. And what I would do is just before your first meal. I have for a long time been doing first thing in the morning, but that can be a little bit... Uh, it's useful now, but... Looking back. But I think what you want to do with this is sort of see where... We, you're really trying to see where your ketosis kicks in. That's the number one thing. And the biggest chance of that seeing where if you the longer you've gone before your first meal, it's going to have the highest chance of measuring the highest ketones. See, what can happen, I can wake up in the morning, I think I showed you, it's 0.5. But a few hours later, I was, I was 1. Mm. Right? doesn't really tell me that much 0.5, except, okay, it's what I'm waking up with. But if I want to, I really want to know if I get into ketosis. That's sort of the, are we getting into ketosis or not? So the bigger chance of that, if you're going to test once a day, test just before your first meal. So that's when you've been fasting the longest. Okay. If you then want to be a bit more, you know, okay, I'm going to test twice a day, I would suggest test before the first meal, before the last meal. You see, that because after you test before your last meal, you also see how your metabolism performed since your first meal. Does okay. like a drink of water affect the test? It should, no. I mean, okay. here's the things that will affect it. If you go and exercise, mm. your blood sugar's gonna go up, ketone's gonna go down. Movement, okay. right? So even just moving around, it's not gonna build up so much in your blood, it's gonna be going to the tissues more. So if you wanna sort of see how high your ketones will build up, it's like, well, I've just been sitting, mm. and my fat burn is going up, but it's also because they're accumulating a little bit. But it's a good sign because my blood sugar is also dropping. So mm -hmm. we can see it's exactly happening what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Right? So you sort of always got to see when you... So make some notes of when you took it, what did you do beforehand? Because then you can say, oh, activity, or I ate, or I was stressed, or I didn't sleep. All those things. Any sort of stress will raise your blood sugar. Think about that. Bad night's sleep, bad phone call with somebody, watching something bad on TV. It'll, it's all stress. It'll all lost. Exercise. Exercise. Yeah. Close one old <laughs> So just think about you know eating all that, right? So that's why is a uh, then you get specific testing. Um, <coughs> and I even put that you know down here in the first one. Look exactly what you've been doing. Um, and I mentioned a bit about exercise. I said yesterday I tested it two hours after exercise. I don't need to test anymore immediately after my workout. I know my blood sugar is going to be seven. But what I want to know is what is it two hours later? Is it mm. still seven? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm, my body's stressed out. If it's not, everything's cool. Time to kick mm. back into fat metabolism. Mm. Mm. 
And that tells me, okay, that workout's probably just right. I do want a little bit of stress. But if you do that right, that's, okay, we're gonna get into that now. Um, specific testing, you can test like exercise, but more your food. If you, if you are sort of wanting to eat a bit more carbohydrate, or you heard me say, oh, he's had sweet potatoes every now, good every now and again, then you sort of test that. But I would test it, you know, at least two or three hours after you finish, because you're not really interested in the spike. That's okay. It's whether it comes back down. That's what you're interested in. It goes up and stays up, and you have such a big insulin response. So basically what's happening, if it's not coming back down, it means those carbohydrates, are, 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 you're still quite insulin resist. Um, you, you're still releasing too much insulin. That's why it's staying up and that coming down. But if it's coming down, start, oh, you're starting to probably function, maybe handle carbohydrates again. Okay. And yeah, I basically put a put a guide for that there. You know, roughly within that. Basically, if you, if your ketones rise, good. You know, I've I've eaten big amounts of fat, and like you see, fat drink goes through the roof. Okay, I can keep having the fat drink. Mm -hmm. You know, go and have a coke, drink that. Okay, mm -hmm. four. Okay, don't have that. Mm -hmm. I don't need to test that anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. um, So this is how I keep notes, for instance, just to give you an example. Again, don't make it hard, make it easy. This is just notes on my iPhone. All right, I won't bother all the details, but basically go through there. Um, so 6 a.m. something, that's what my, my numbers were. They were 4.4 and my ketones were 0 0.6. I always convert it over to, uh, that's the, milliliters but that's the other measurement yeah. you would use in America mm -hmm. so 79 um, and then I basically just track my my activity you know like like T1 is my toilet visit so I track when I go to the toilet it's quite handy to know sometimes I go you know once a day sometimes I go three four times a day so it's quite handy to know what and that's again what how are you can go now you have the data oh I went, okay what okay now I went four times what did I eat yesterday that Maybe did that, and you start to see a pattern. Uh, that was so. That was my um, that was my uh, high intensity workout on the seventh. So this is going back to the seventh, and that's just the exercises. But just a note on the exercise, you can see this is an example of what I note. So that CH is what you call a chest press machine. You've ever been to the gym and they got the machines you can sit in. So I was on that for one minute and eighteen seconds. Then I rested for 30 seconds, that's the big R. And then I was on a rowing machine, which is move my legs where you're pulling using your arms and your back. I was on that for a minute and 32 seconds. Rested for another 30. Then I was on a shoulder press, which is where you press up above your head for a minute and 19 seconds. Rested for 40. And a, a leg extension, where you simply sit, you extend your legs like that. For a minute and 17. Total workout, start to finish, seven minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> Done. For two weeks. No. Yeah. So, this is what, what happened. Um, so then I just track, you know, a few notes about my, my workout. Um, you know, just what I thought. Hmm, maybe a bit too long seems good for body composition and my because my strength had gone down. See if, if you see these times here, 133, 118, the same weight I could I was weaker to, I couldn't do as long today. Right? Um, so I actually look I actually went down in progression, that's why I went, hmm, maybe it's a bit too long, maybe I left it a bit too long. Um, but <coughs> the reason I write maybe good for body composition, because I had a body scan and I'm still gaining muscle and losing fat. But performance-wise, okay, maybe that was just... Um, you know, I go to two coffees at a Our Place Cafe in Mount Barker, uh, WHM, walked home, 153, I did another test. That's what my blood was then. So that's quite a good response. That was after, so I finished the exercise here at 8 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock, I was in quite a good fat metabolism. So my body was not stressed anymore. That's what that's what I'm looking for a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. Um, only because I've done a lot of testing with exercise and I know my blood sugars goes through the roof. But you want them to come back down, mm-hmm. produce some ketones, then your body's chilling out again and just get back in. And then you'll burn more fat. <laughs> so use another, okay, fucking clever. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I get these ideas and so I write them down. Uh, but you get the idea. Yeah. Um, and here, right, so you can see I didn't really eat uh, first bite of food of good so I do spelling mistakes too <laughs> but first bite 2pm and this is what I had um, so I described that and then by 6pm my ketones and blood sugar was still that <laughs> so and what I do to record okay I can write down that's you know two eggs pretty much what you had here today two eggs kale salad butter coconut oil MCT but just to make sure I don't forget, I'll take a picture of it. Done. Because of time and date. Time of day. And if you can't remember, you can always look. You know, it's handy if you're doing presentations too. You can show people what you ate. And that's just a little, yeah, and then 6 p.m. Um, and dinner. That was dinner that day. So again, picture says it's out in words, doesn't it? You know, you can write it down to what was it? Oh, okay. okay. So that's what, how I keep my notes. Very simple. You all got your phone with you. Take a picture. And you can see here that the, the that's that's where the device comes in handy. But can you see how actually there at, at six PM? I knew it was around six something, I couldn't remember. And I wrote it down on and I put my, my meter somewhere else, and those are the wrong numbers I wrote down. Can you see that? So that's where it's handy. This thing will record it. Mm. That's, a, no, that's my old mm. meter. Um, they don't make that one anymore. But So yeah, you always have the record here, but I recommend having it there. And that's sort of your data, you know, you can, it, it's fairly just, it's a bit like keeping a journal and this stuff, you know, but you need, to, you need to do it. Even if you don't look at it for a long time, once you want to go back and analyze it, you can't go back and collect it if you didn't collect it. Mm-hmm. That's why sometimes I just do these blood tests without, that's just what I do. Mm. Oh, why am I doing all of this? Why? Well, sometimes I don't exactly know, but once I want to start analysing, ah, oh, I really want to see if I can see any correlation for that. Mm. Oh, geez, I wish I'd done that for the last three months. Well, now it's gone, you know. Mm. So you sort of got to think of it, as, it, as I said, from the start, this protocol is an experiment. It's a definition of a protocol. Okay, so sometimes I have dessert. I did promise you guys dessert. Um, <coughs> but yeah, that was my dinner another night. Dinner, three eggs, oysters, oven veggies, green salad, love and picture, cherry tomatoes, cucumber, no extra fat. So yeah, that was another dinner, you know, just very simple. Roasted vegetables under there. Um, and yeah, that can be dessert. Um, how are we going? Time, I'm really, we're sort of just running in. Four o'clock, right? Just about spot on four. Yeah, how are you guys going? You, I mean, I, I don't mind going a bit, a bit over, but if somebody um, needs to get. We're fine with it. Mm-hmm. Like I say, another, you know, within an hour we'll have this wrapped up. Mm-hmm. I really don't mm-hmm. want to rush it. I'm probably going to have to go back. Have I? Okay. Yeah. Well, what about I just show you a little bit of dessert? I'll just bring it in. Mm-hmm. And um, again, we'll just well, well, let's just get up and, and do it. We'll it'll just make it stretch our legs, and then we'll, um, we'll get into some, some of this stuff. Sorry. Sorry. All right, so that's a little bit of yeah. I urge you to try. It. I mean, that's just a bit of cheese and nuts, and again, something you can snack on. You know, um, <coughs> today you should do it. If it's still a bit hungry, say half an hour after dinner, kind of cheese and nuts. You know, plenty more fat. Uh, but the thing is, you don't. You tend to not really snack. Mm. It's a beauty about this, you know. You get this going, this fat metabolism. Like you see today, this is pretty much the first bite of food I had, mm. and what well, it's there, and it's I could eat. And, but I think also when you get this switched on so good, it's because your energy levels doesn't mean you shouldn't eat. It might be optimal to eat, but because your energy energy levels don't drop. Because my blood sugar doesn't dip or any of my ketones yeah. just take over, no. I just don't even. It's not an issue, you know. Yeah, it's nice. It's 
And you've been talking all day. But but yeah, Mm. but you don't really you don't really miss a beat, and that's the problem. If if you, I think you can actually um, get this turned on so well that yeah, you gotta you gotta be a bit conscious of eating, which Mm. I Mm. think I'm getting to now, and I'll show you why I think that. Um, so body composition test, I think that's a, a, and photos, I think is more essential tools of the trade. You have to monitor, monitor your progress. Um, cause the scales don't really tell you much. They tell you weight, but this is what a body composition can tell you. So I got a place in Adelaide and I've had five body compositions done, and you can see there the dates, the 27th of January, 23rd of March, 15th of April, 20th of May, and then just a few days ago, the 22nd was this week. And you can see my weight, I have lost, you know, total weight just down three and a half kilos. But what you couldn't see in that weight is that I've actually lost 4.3 kilos of fat. Right, so I've lost more weight fat than weight. So you go, well, how does that work? How can you lose more weight than <coughs> but gain a kilo of muscle? Yeah. Right, so SMM is your skeletal muscle mass, and your fat is obviously your fat. So you can see in January, and that that's in kilos. That's um, so that's not your percentage. So my percentage now is five point seven percent fat. But that's your fat mass in kilos. But can you see how I almost had eight kilos of fat in end of January, and now I've got less than four? So I've lost over half of my fat mass, but I've gained a kilo in. The scales won't tell you that, right? Mm. And you also want to know if you did lose weight, you go, wow, good on me. What about you get one of these and it's all muscle? That's not a really good thing. You're doing that, you, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be losing muscle. Right, so that was three and a half kilos of muscle mass and nothing, you know, that's not good. If those numbers had been reversed, you know, fat loss 0. 0.9 and, and muscle muscle mass loss 4.3. Is it, is it possible? Yeah. Absolutely. Really? If you set your chemistry up in such a way... To lose the muscle instead of the fat. Well... If you're doing all the wrong things, if you're exercising, you're pushing the, the energy that you want. You want a high energy output. See, accumulation of muscle, or accumulation of fat, is all a body chemistry thing. And such is the, the breakdown of muscle as well. It's all body chemistry. That's where we have everything. It's chemicals. And all we do with food, all we do with diet and exercise is is, is make that chemical environment. So we have to think, it's not this mechanistic thing that we go and build muscle. No, it depends on what response, how your body responds to that. So if you continue doing this environment, that's why you said, look, there was a, I think I mentioned it at a talk, there's a personal trainer in Mount Parker came to me and I helped her. The hardest thing was to get her to, to stop exercising, but guess what happened seven weeks? She lost two and a half kilos of fat and gained a kilo and a half of muscle. Mm. Right. By stopping her exercise. Well, she cut down for a little bit. She would have gotten even better if mm. that was initially she, she um, thank God she had a body scan and, and um, you know, straight away she was slimming down and you could see it. But then she went, she had to train hard for this. Okay, fine. But she kept doing the low carb and just that, it still worked. But this is working even better. I mean, this is a 42-year-old guy, which is me. <laughs> and I'm doing bugger all exercise, and I'm gaining muscle and losing fat like there's no tomorrow. But I'm not running, you know, like I run to the bus sometimes. I run after the dog. <laughs> um, but you saw my workout before, 7 mm-hmm. minutes and 20 seconds. Look, what I do every day, if I can, I walk the dog in the morning. We go to this park, and I have started just maybe a handful of times I do some short sprints like they are like 50 meters sprint across the football field so less than 10 seconds I, I might do six of them you know 
But again, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not after burning calories. I'm after giving my body a little stress response. I'm going to get into how that works. But, you know, you sort of see, you get, you get the idea here, see, this is what's happened to me, and, I, and this is always to show you how this, it works for me. But you need to do something like this to monitor your progress. The scales won't tell you this. And that can be very discouraging. The scales aren't moving. Well, what about if you lost two kilos of fat and gained two kilos of muscle? The scales aren't moving and you're going, Jesus, this is discouraging. But you're doing fantastic. You're absolutely doing fantastic. So the weight is only... The weight is like... If I did, if, it's a bit like all those other things we've talked about. Oh, calories are calories. Well, they are, but there's a big but. Mm. Where are they coming from? What are they doing? Right? Weight. Okay, you lost weight, you gained weight. Okay. What was the composition of that weight loss or weight gain? And what about the gain weight? Can anyone go here and get one done? Yep, uh, I'll show you. So, this is what I got set up. Um, and this again, I, I don't make anything on this. I just went to the guys that do it. And it's actually only for, for my clients. You can get six scans done for ninety five dollars. Wow. The best they do for anybody else is five for hundred. Mm. I try to negotiate even lower, but they wouldn't go any lower. Mm -hmm. Um all you gotta do is, is let me know and and um I I let them know and um Yeah, because I pay what, thirty dollars for Jesus, thirty dollars a pop. So this brings it down to like almost ridiculous fifteen bucks or whatever, mm -hmm. sixteen. Mm -hmm. And it's a basically, you go on this machine, strip down into your underwear, um, and you just hold on to these two electrodes. It's basically some electrode that goes through your, your body and measures the different tissues. So it takes a minute. You basically stand there, and that's it. Okay. And I'm going to compare this, because back in January, I had a DEXA scan done, if anybody. It's like a proper x-ray. Yeah. That's supposed to be the golden standard. This one is supposed to match up to that. So next yeah. month, I'm actually doing one the same day. I want to see exactly how they match up. Yeah. I had one done in January. They're fairly close. Um, but I want to see for sure. But this is much cheaper and much paid for. Mm. Less radiation. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's just a good motivator too. When you can see it, that mm. happen, you know, uh, or not. Because it doesn't matter how you feel. If you, oh, I don't feel like anything's happening. Scales aren't moving. But this is actually what we're interested in. So I highly recommend that. Um, I recommend taking some photos. Um, this is a mate of mine who does my photos. I go and get it professionally taken. Uh, I've known him for years, so he only does it. We exchange favours. But I said, what would you do for somebody if they want to have the same amount of photos taken? So he would do six sessions for 400. Um, that's just one photo. We, we should do you know the whole way around about six photos and if you want some like he's a professional photographer um, and he's willing to do six sessions that don't expire so you can do them over 12 months if you want it uh, he'll edit them uh, so all the lighting everything is the same and put the date and send them to you so okay. he's pretty liberal so you know say oh because I usually get like a, a, a headshot for my business card or whatever so he's not too fussed if we don't do that as well so but yeah, if professional, but at least just otherwise for your own records, do the photos because you can't go back and take it, mm -hmm. right? I know it might be hard at, at, at first. Uh, to, why would I want to take a photo? You don't want to know. Um, I can relate. You, you know what I mean? So, But you can't go back and take the photos. Just remember that. Yeah. And for you to have them in six months, yeah. guarantee you'll be happy you did it. Yeah? Because it's like you have these figures and you have the photos and something, oh, you know, I haven't, not much has happened. And then you go back, well, hang on, mm. all this stuff did happen and I've got it here in front of me. That's a big motivator, you know, mm. an encourager. So whichever way you do it, I would recommend. But basically, if you look at that, look, that would cover you for a year. I, would, I do a scan every month, but you could do it every two months and photos every two months or photos every... But let's say 500 bucks... Mm a year to, to do your body scans and your photos. Mm. At least do the body scans as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Photos, do them, maybe not this way. <laughs> if you want, we can. Um, but yeah, and so I, I've known the guy for all my life and um, he's very good. Where so, are the scans done? 
uh, in Gilbert Street in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so just need to let me know so I can let them know and let you come in. So then you just yeah, pay them directly. So, mm. but yeah, yeah, they're, they're quite good. So, um, okay, so we'll just cover. We won't spend too long, but low in, it's got low intensity movement. I wouldn't call it exercise. I just want to. Give you my take <coughs> on that's the next block. Once you got all these, and I, I do really sort of want to take this seriously. Don't worry about this one until you got that one sorted. But they sort of sometimes they come together, you know. Mm-hmm. But basically, don't get too stressed out about the fasting and ketosis until you feel like you're doing these two fairly well. Mm-hmm. Because unless you do these two fairly well, it's going to be very freaking hard doing this. Because you know what? If you get your diet sorted here, you're going to be halfway doing this anyway. Mm. It'll just be a natural progression. And once you get these three sorted, you're going to want them to do this anyway. So it's like, it's not a discipline thing, it's, it's more or less you're just going to progress into it. Mm. And because the actual diet helps with the sleep and stress as well. Yeah. So it is, it is a bit back really and forth helps. a bit, yeah. but it, mm. this is probably more, we should maybe call even just be aware mm. that it is highly related, yes. right? And if you're not being aware and just stressing out of everything, where you could maybe just take a moment and, and go, okay, maybe I should just be a bit more conscious about that because mm-hmm. I know what it's doing to my cortisol. My, mm-hmm. It might just help you a little bit. Yeah. But what low intensity movement does, and you sort of probably by now realise I've got a different opinion on what view on what exercise does, but this is what I believe it does. If you move a lot throughout the day, you're sending instructions and signals regarding what the ideal body composition should be your movement pattern that's what you, you're not burning calories like seven minutes and 20 seconds in the gym doesn't burn a hell of a lot of calories it burns a bit mm. but I'm sending a, a, a different signal which I'll talk about in a minute so this is what just moving a lot does okay so the reason for keeping intensity low though is because we don't want to trigger a fight or flight response stress response so you, you don't want to go power walking Right? You want to actually chill out, but you want to move. Mm. So you see what signal you're sending? Mm. Yeah. Because the stress can raise blood sugar, insulin, and induce lipogenesis. Okay? So it's never about this whole thing about burning off fat while we exercise, forget about it. It's pause. But if we stay calm, telling the body everything's okay, while simultaneously staying active, signaling the need to be lean, light, and agile. We're giving the appropriate orders for our body to adapt the leaner physique. So you're just giving your body orders of what physique you want to be. It's a totally different paradigm, isn't it, than mm. punishing yourself on the treadmill. And mm. um, The activity itself is not important, whether it be as simple as walking, very slow, limited jogging, extremely light yoga, swimming or golf, as long as the message to the body is one of relaxation and movement. For example, easy slow walking is better than power walking okay and this sort of I call it high volume because you can't do it too much if you're chilling out and want to move and that's the thing that I think is that the last element in this and where I'm sort of I think it becomes really really important for it for your faster function once because you think about what we're doing we're starting to convert food and store fat into energy that's what we start that's what we're changing well, what's going to, what, when you have release a lot of energy, when your cells are buzzing, what do you want to do? Mm. You want to move. Mm. And we're probably meant to be physical creatures if we go back in the day. Mm. So we're just going back to what we're probably meant to be. But that means that this also becomes a, a, an important element. Then you need to actually do what we're meant to do on that part too. Okay, so now we've adjusted the diet, the metabolism, everything's working. But it was meant to be in a body that's meant to move quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So now we've got to factor that in. But this will sort of come naturally. You'll mm-hmm. feel like, you know, you can probably see me, I'm a bit like, I can see when I've been sitting still all day, like, I just want to go for a walk. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, oh, I've got to go take the dog for a walk. <sighs> no, it's like, geez, is it four o'clock yet? Is it four? Okay, let's take the dog mm-hmm. for a walk. Mm-hmm. I'll sprint on days in the morning to feel like sprinting, you know. Oh, I feel like, yeah, it's really okay. And then on days I'm not, oh, the body just, it's okay. But the movement part thing is important. Mm-hmm. And for many, 
there's other things we could talk about there, but that's how I think it works, and that's that's seems to be why I'm now at you know six percent body fat from not doing. You know, I was doing that. You've been to my talk. You know, 150 kilometers running a week, and I had five kilos, four or five kilos more fat on me than I do now. Now it should be the opposite, shouldn't it? Mm, According absolutely. to conventional, yeah. but it's not. This is all the numbers are there. So, mm. well, two nights is a classic, isn't yeah. it? He's yeah. It's happening all around, mate. Like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a. Have you heard Mark Sisson? Everybody heard him. Yeah. Yeah. The guy's in his sixties, and he's yeah. Mark Sisson, yeah. Primal yeah. Blueprint. He's one of the sort of instigators yeah. of this, but he's written a really good book about. It's called um, Primal Endurance. And and it's actually pretty much all this. He stole, he stole that from me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're all talking about it at the same time. They all the ones mm. I listen to all seem to know each other, co- collaborate, and, mm. and they work together, right? Yeah. So there is like, there's some really really smart people on this and have been on it for mm. a long time and in universities and stuff. It's just mm. not the main. You won't. See, you will never see this on the front page of a newspaper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You've got too many people. Not for once. How does yoga fit into low intensity? Yeah, well, perfectly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. I, I do my yoga, I teach my classes. I don't do a, um, a really strict yoga practice at home because I'm teaching and I don't always work through the classes. I'll just explain and I just walk the dog. I don't do lots of powerful work or strong work. I just mm. yeah, go with the flow. Mm. Mm. So, what what's happening now? And look, this stuff has been around. There's been running coaches preaching this stuff, and um, for years. And there's another. Anyway, we won't go into that. But basically, there's this, and then there's this. There's nothing in between. The the in between stuff is the damage stuff, which is what. Mm. the majority population doing they're working at a, at a that medium intensity which stresses your body lots of stress signals and they're doing it for so long that it becomes a chronic stress in a nutshell I've, I've been there don't worry about and I'm, I'm not even downgrading anybody I'm saying that's what's happening why could I carry four kilos and more fat running that much, expending that much more energy, I stop and all of a sudden the fat goes away. There's something else going on than this simple burn up the calories and blah, 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 all that. And this is what we talk about, that's what's going on, your body chemistry. And But this is how exercise is integral and how it does fit in. And I think this is, see I put this one at the top, I think it's probably the most important, but you can only put it until you build all this first, mm-hmm. but then it'll come naturally too. But then it'll do things. You, you saw my my results um, before. See how this is in the last five months. That weight you see in January, that was probably I maintained that for two years after I stopped running. So that was probably two years to the day since I stopped running. But I was still I was on this diet, and that period pretty much just stayed the same. Which shows you the power. Okay, I stopped running 150 kilometers. I walked the dog. I didn't even do much of the high intensity stuff. But it showed <coughs> me then, well, there's something else going on. But see, I didn't start losing fat, did I? Even on low carb, high fat. This didn't happen till January. You can see how drastically it happened. Mm-hmm. And January is when I decided to sort of, you know, I'd done another fast before that. Up until that point, I pretty much experimented with staying in high ketosis. Done two 10-day fasts, um, weeks and weeks or months of the staying in a metabolic zone where I ate once a day for six days fast. Um, I was really more or less playing around with ketosis, you know. And my weight pretty much stayed around that. So then, about January, then I thought, well, I want to try this high intensity, give that a good go. I've been doing it sporadically and sprinting. So then my weight actually shot up a little bit. I can see it shot up. It was probably around that 65. It shot up to almost 67. But this is where we sort of go, oh, okay, you put in a fat, you this and that. But now I see I changed my regime around. I'm still eating the same food, but probably more of it. 
a little bit more consistent training. So now I was actually putting my body in a different environment. So what I did, I went up, I think it went as high as 68. But it's sort of just, but I was in ketosis, so I thought, well, hang on. I'm in ketosis, things are probably still okay, but my body's somehow adjusting. Right, I still stayed in ketosis, blood sugar's fine. And then I just did this high intensity exercise and got a bit more stringent about once a week. And then this started happening over five months. All of a sudden it's like... So it doesn't happen, you know, like day to, you know, from one day to the next to the next to the week. But if you've followed yourself and your body and you understand what ketosis is, and if I was eating the same diet, I'm in ketosis, okay, I'm running a fat metabolism. My body's shooting up. But if that rapidly, it's probably just water weight. There's no way you can synthesize fat that quickly or muscle. So just like let it adjust, and that's what it seemed like it did. But yeah, that was the the, and again, it could have been the end result of the last standing ketosis and doing this for so long, that it sort of culminated of the correlation between the high intensity exercise, but it could also be a long progression, that finally, I was releasing this fat. So. But what I can do, I can only sort of relate my experience that it did happen, it has happened, and it's some of these factors, or all of them. But I do think, from my own belief, I think it's this one is, is, is really key. Mm -hmm.